Okay, we're here today at the 2011 San Diego Vision Symposium, which is sponsored by the Discovery Eye Foundation. And we're with Dr. Donald Minkler, who is one of the presenters. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you. Doctor, is there something you can tell us about the current developments in the study of glaucoma and its effect on individual patients? I am very excited about uh, advances in uh, techniques, methodology, uh, in the study of the optic nerve. Mm -hmm. It's been an interest of mine for decades. Uh, we now have uh, ways of examining tissue that don't require a rather invasive um, preparation. For example, a standard paraffin section like you make for uh, trying to figure out what a tumor was involves fixing the tissue and embedding it and making sections and then putting those sections on a slide and in between those events there's lots of uh, solutions that, that go on. So actually by the time the pathologist gets a standard slide it's very different from, from reality. Mm. We now have a, uh, a femtosecond laser that can actually look for 100 microns in the tissue and we're actively studying the uh, lamina part of the optic nerve. It's the, kind of the, uh, the bones of the, uh, uh, the disc, if you will. Behind what you see in the eye clinically, there's this structure called the lamina, which all the wires going to the brain have to go through. And it turns out in uh, physiologic experiments that that seems to be where the major damage occurs to the nerve in glaucoma. So we're very interested in what's happening with that structure as pressure increases. So it sounds like you're getting very much greater visibility as to what's going on in that well, we area. Can, we can actually study the, if you will, the, the molecular structure of this thing and, and see what happens to that with uh, pressure. Uh, specifically, the femtosecond laser can see collagen and elastin, which are important components of this area of tissue. Also, drug delivery systems are coming along to get back to the clinical area, so hopefully patients will not have to put a drop in every day. We can have a, a drug delivery over some period of time without dropper bottles. Uh, they can be put in the punctal uh, system in the, in the lid, in the lacrimal system, like uh, punctal plugs for dry eye. I so this would be a device actually inserted? Yes, in it could be easily inserted. And, mm -hmm. uh, Presumably, uh, it's coming along as a, as a depot delivery method. Mm -hmm. The only uh, past thing we had were uh, OcuCerts, which won more like contact lenses. And for some reason, they just didn't survive. Uh, they were delivering pilocarpine, which is now a drug that's hardly ever used. But it was a very clever way of delivering a drug, because this thing could float around in your tear film for mm -hmm. uh, a week, I think it was, delivering a drug. Constant delivery of drug would be a big advantage over splashing the eye with a huge dose. Um, and it makes a lot of sense physiologically uh, if, if that can be developed. So with that huge dose, the absorption would be kind of hit and miss. I would yeah, well, I think yeah. you probably waste a lot of it. Oh, okay. Because many drugs have to go through the cornea and then get into the inside of the eye before they have their effect. So the cornea is a major barrier to drug delivery. Anyway, if the drug is present in a sort of a modest concentration over time, it'd be, I think, just as effective as a, a big splash of the drug you know, every six hours or once a day. Now, the use of the laser that you mentioned before sounds like a potential for a diagnosis. Is that right? Uh, actually, the femtosecond laser is, is being uh, experimented with, mostly with regard to surgery. It's actually in use now as a, uh, uh, an instrument called the intralase for uh, refractive surgery. For example, LASIK uh, is now done, or can be done with this laser. It actually can cut the, the uh, uh, so to speak, the button that you want to lift so you can use the uh, laser in the bed to adjust the refractive error. Uh, it's all automated. It's an amazing thing to watch. The uh, device creates little bubbles at, at whatever plane of the tissue you want. It's all computer controlled. So basically, you, you put your information in the system and it 
does its job. It's quite oh, amazing. Oh, that's, that's remarkable, and it's removing a lot of potential sources for, uh, shall we say, human error. Variations. <laughs> yes. Okay, human error, well, if I you suppose will. you can still program the thing wrong or something. Well, but anyways, there's always room it's, for it's that. It's an amazing uh, advance. Uh -huh. Well, thank you, Doctor, and thank you for your contribution to the symposium. Oh, you're welcome.